गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू लेट स्टार्ट द चैप्टर नाइन दैट इज वैदरिंग एंड जेनरेशन एंड इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू सी अबाउट द डिटेल एक्सप्लेनेशन अबाउट द वैदरिंग एंड जेनोरेशन एंड स्पेशली अबाउट द वैदरिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट सी अबाउट द मीनिंग ऑफ वैदरिंग वट डू यू मीन बाय द वैदरिंग एज द वर्ड वैदरिंग एज यू कैन सी इट सजेस्ट इट इज डिराइव फ्रॉम द वर्ड वैदर सो वन थिंग from this word you can understand that this word weathering means the elements of weather which we are away the rock which breaks the rock into pieces well let's see how it is so usually there are the elements of weather what is the what do you mean by the elements of weather the rain air heat frost and cold all these things are called the elements of weather now usually continuously every day what happens you can find during the morning what happens the temperature is cold and as the day progresses and during the afternoon it becomes very very hot especially in the summer days and again the night becomes very cold while the winter season you can find the nights becomes very very cold well these are the things you can find the weather condition just changes every time every day many times so continuously in the, the with this change of this weather condition what happen it affects the rock now example you can find one thing you can find actually even the our uh, any car the very new car actually is uh, just kept there outside and it is not properly covered or not kept in the garage you can find the old the new car even just in a two uh, two year it becomes Uh, it just after two years it looks like very very old why because the uh, the continuously it is just kept in the open and the weather it affects the the car and the color gets shade and everything the tear and wear can be seen on the car on the bike and the cycles everything anything which is actually usually kept outside and not properly care taken care so the same thing is there when the rocks and everything usually they are okay, they are just open they are in the open every time and this is why continuously they go through they just experience different types of weather condition changing weather condition and these weather condition it just what happen it creates a wearing in the rocks the rocks gets broken now this is called the weathering now this weathering as you can find it involves two things two very important things you must align here the first is the disintegration and decomposition of rocks so this is very important thing this is the key word you underline it and this is very important to explain about the weathering so weathering it involves what thing the two thing the number one disintegration second thing decomposition so first of all let me explain you these are the two terms which is very very important what is the meaning of disintegration when the rocks they gets broken into pieces when the continuous the change in the temperature or the wind or maybe the frost or heat and the air cold rainfall it affects the rock and breaks it into pieces and usually it is a physical process so this is called the disintegration so we can say usually when the rocks get weathered by the mechanical process or the physical process that is called disintegration this can be seen in one thing the mechanical weathering when we i will explain you we're going to see after this the types of weathering next is the decomposition let me explain you what is the meaning of decomposition now usually the word decomposition is used especially for the organic matter when it goes through the process of decomposition in which the bacteria it breaks the organic compound in the simple compound that you have studied in biology but here this is the decomposition of rocks it's not the same now what's happen here in the decomposition of rocks now let me just give you one example now example the suppose there is a one uh, rock one rock it it is made up of 
so many things but there is a uh, magnesium oxide or maybe iron oxide so the both cases either if it is a ma magnesium oxide or the uh, ferrous oxide that is iron ferrous is iron so what happens when this rock comes into the contact of air now what happen the oxide the it the magnesium oxide so the oxygen this compound it reacts with the water and the oxygen and what happen the oxide is removed from the magnesium or either ferrous that is iron so what happens here this after the now we can say that a reaction takes place when these rocks come into the into the contact of either water or air so a uh, reaction takes place in the rock and what happen the rocks becomes weak and it gets weathered weathered means it gets broken into pieces well this is the decomposition of rock this you can see in the chemical weathering so we will discuss it again so these two words are very important all of you underline it so the weathering involves disintegration and decomposition of the rocks so this is the the main important thing of the whole chapter now let's see what is the difference between the weathering and denudation now what is denudation now before that we let let us uh, see about the denudation what do you mean by the denudation so after completing the weathering we will see again about the denudation but let me just explain you denudation actually what happens when the rocks they are being uh, eroded either by the strong winds or by the running water so these are called the agents of erosion or glaciers or so many man made factors so when the rocks they get weathered by the running water suppose let's take an example of running water during the flood what happens the because of the flood a large area has been destroyed you can find now that is the work of the river the work of the water running water in that actually the rocks or the uh, different areas they are get weathered or broken into pieces they are eroded first of all and they are carried by the water and they are deposited at some other place well so many things are there first of all the erosion then the transportation of the sediments and deposition of the sediments so especially it can be uh, it can be put into three categories the first is the erosion second is the transportation and third is the uh, deposition so this whole process is called denudation so you can see the denudation is a you will find here the weathering is a static process static means it is a slow process and continuous process and so in one word we can explain it it is a static process while denudation is the dynamic process in which in one week or some days you can find the whole area has been destroyed by the flood so again we are going to see about the denudation but first of all let's start the weathering so first is the types of weathering so you are going to study about the three types of weathering usually the weathering can be kept only in two categories but here the third category also is been formed so let's see here the first is the physical or mechanical weathering as i explained you the physical and mechanical weathering is usually it uh, occurs due to the the which process and disintegration of rocks i explained you so physical and mechan mechanical weathering that is brought about by the severe agents means the the agents of uh, elements of the weather that is frost heat cold wind all these factors even biotic factors right biotic factors means the man made and the animal and the plants so by these all factors when the rocks are get weathered that is usually a mechanical process that is what thing takes place disintegration of rocks second is the chemical weathering in which the main agent is 
the rainfall and also the air so when the rocks i explained you and what thing it takes place here decomposition of rocks so when the rocks they are exposed to the water or they come in contact with water or by the or by air so what happen some of the chemical present in the rock it reacts with the water or maybe by the air some gases in the air and what happen a chemical change takes place in the rock and the rock becomes weak and gets weathered so that is a chemical weathering now this third type is also formed as you can see it is a biotic and biological weathering already we have already I, we have uh, discussed this thing that it is also taken place by the disintegration of rock disintegration this is the same thing physical physical process takes place Mechan me mechanical or physical process well so this way you are going to study about the three types of weathering so let's start the first of all that we are going to study about the mechanical weathering and i think today we are going to only finish the first one the mechanical weathering already i have explained you in the mechanical weathering what thing is responsible i told you the disintegration of rocks and what happens here the elements of weather such as heat frost wind plants man and animal now plant man and animals what are they there is a biotic factor they are also included in it so together not only the elements of weather but also the biotic factor they they act as a mechanical or as a as a factor which disintegrate the rock okay now let's see here so in this we are going to study we are going to discuss about the the elements of weather so let's see one by one so first element is the extremes of temperature i usually in the desert you can find the extremes of temperature is very very common what happened during the day it becomes very very hot and the night you can find the temperature falls down and sometimes it becomes so cold that the people who travels in the desert or they uh, used to live the outer part of the desert even you will find these people they carry the warm clothes with them what is the reason reason is because the temperature it just falls down so much so big it becomes so cold that sometimes temperature reaches to uh, 14 15 16 16 is too much you can experience it even when you uh, use your ac and you just uh, put the temperature on 16 degree centigrade and what happens it becomes so cold that you we use the what thing the quilt right so the thing is 16 degree centigrade temperature is very very cold and during the day the temperature becomes very very hot that becomes 40 45 but during the night it just falls down now what why it happens in the desert because the, in the desert they don't first of all they don't have any vegetation so next is no vegetation means not even the grasses are found no water is there it means it, the ground is very dry no moisture there and at the same time the sky is also very clear no clouds to cover the that region so the insulation that region desert receives the maximum insulation very high insulation what is the insulation the earth the amount of sun's heat intercepted by the earth is called insulation we're going to study in the uh, some chapters after after this right there's one chapter in insulation you will study well so here the usually what happened because of the lack of the vegetation moisture water no vegetation so what happens and the, even the sky is also very clear so during the day the the ground it absorbs so much heat and becomes very hot while the night what happened very quickly the heat has been radiated back in the space and the area become very cold this is why the extremes of temperature what can be experienced in the desert it can't be experienced anywhere else and this thing can be seen in so many things there is a one thing exfoliation what is the exfoliation now let me explain to you and first of all let me show you the picture here you can see here one figure as you can see this is a rock and you can find here a tearing of the rock the upper portion you can see it is it is just being separated slowly and slowly 
so what happened because of the continuous extremes of temperature during the night becomes very cold and the day becomes very hot and what happens this change in this temperature right what happened in the arid region arid means in the desert region especially that forms the crack in the rock and what happened the one layer of this rock it just comes out it just gets weathered and it's it separated then the another layer so another layer so usually this whole rock actually is weathered in layers so when this weathering is done in the layers like if you find there is an onion onion is has so many layers so same way when the rocks is get weathered in layers so that is called exfoliation this is very very important you can underline it this question can be asked what do you mean by exfol exfoliation how it is caused what factors are uh, important in this now next is the nature of rocks what is what do, what do you mean by the nature of rocks now you can all of you know some rocks can be very very hard some rocks can be very very soft the thing is the if the rock is very hard so it will take a lot of time for that uh, rock to get weathered but if the rock is soft in nature what will happen it may it may be soluble even so when it comes in contact with water very easily it becomes uh, very very soft and can be weathered easily so the nature of the rock is very very important nature means that is that shows about whether the rock is hard or the soft that is the nature so it is a, another factor which uh, now the next one is the structure of rocks now what do you mean by the structure of rock the structure means the texture or the arrangement of rocks now the one very important thing very imp uh, easy thing can be seen if the rocks have the so many edges so the weathering is easier but if the rock is very round in shape and very smooth surface so that rock can be weathered very very it is very very difficult to for the weathering of that rock which is very very smooth and hard and the surface is very very uh, very clean and very shiny and very slippery right so that is the structure of rocks okay that also affects the weathering well so next is the frost now frost how the frost can be a one agent uh, sometimes what happen in the areas especially in the in the in the areas that is in the temperate region or maybe in the arctic region now what happens the water during the day it enters in the crack of the rocks and what happened during the night as temperature becomes goes down below freezing point this water gets frozen and one thing all of you know that when the water gets frozen it expands so the water in the cracks of the rock when it gets frozen it expands and widens the crack and this is how it weathered the rock now here the effect of frost can be seen you can see here this region how the frost has affected and so many gaps have been prepared here created by the frost so this is how the frost is also a one factor next is the wind now the very very strong wind especially in the desert region when the wind blows it's very very strong they are so strong that they can even carry the dust particles so what happen when these dust when these wind actually when they hit any rock so these wind also carries the sand and these sands in these winds they act as a as a sand paper they continuously as it blow they also erodes the surface and what happen different types of structures are formed there is a one such type of uh, one such type of uh, rock which is usually very very common formed due to the this uh, wind erosion and we are we call it the mushroom rock mushroom rock the means the upper portion just uh, is very big and the bottom it becomes very very narrow so it looks like mushroom and that's why we call it mushroom rocks well the figure is not given here otherwise i would be showing you now next is the slope of the land slope of the land is another factor 
Now, when the slope is very, very steep, so one thing you can find the when the rainfall occurs, the water flows down with a very great speed, and that also erodes the surface of that slope. So weathering is easier, but if the slope is gentle, so the weathering also becomes very slow. So slope of the land is also another factor. so we have just covered the every factor now next point is the chemical weathering so we will start in the next session so all of you just read this chapter and just try to find out the difficult things whenever we get the time and sit together so you can ask so all the best.